Hey, thanks for tuning in for today's Connect video. Tuesday, January 11th, and um, our theme this year is Deeply Rooted. And throughout the year, we'll be focusing uh, at various times uh, on just really how to make sure we are growing in our faith, how to make sure we're building ourselves up, establishing us in the faith, and um, just a couple quick announcements for you uh, to follow up. This is one of those, both of these announcements help you become more deeply rooted in Christ. The first one is the women's Bible studies starting today, uh, this morning right now as I'm recording this video, but also uh, tonight. And um, even if you're not here for the first study, you can still join in and it'd be great. You're not going to be uh, so far behind or anything it'd, it'd be wonderful so if you're uh, uh if you want to be a part of the uh, women's bible studies uh, that meet on tuesdays make sure you contact the office uh, get your name on that list we can get some materials for you and you can uh, start uh, either tonight or next week so the women's bible studies the other one scribes and scripture conference coming up here january 22nd it's a one-day conference and we're bringing in a couple of the, um, the textual criticism experts from Phoenix Seminary. Um, we don't get a chance to get guys like this down in Tucson uh, very often at all. And so these guys are really tremendously capable and skilled in what they do. You'll, you'll really enjoy this conference. It'll be hugely informative and um, You'll enjoy the, the conference, I guarantee, if you're here, to help us make sure we understand how did we get the Bible that we have in our lap or on our phone, right, and, and how we can have confidence, how we can know and have great confidence that this is true to the original author's autographs or what they wrote down. And uh, we will walk through those things. Tremendous opportunity. It's only 10 bucks. That includes lunch, all the refreshments and during the breaks, and also the conference, <laughs> So please sign up, cdobible.org slash give. You can pay there or go to scribesandscripture.com and sign up there. But uh, that's Saturday, January 22nd. Um, hey, this past Sunday was really a, a great morning. And uh, the highlight for me, and I know for many of you, was Jordan Tabor and this young lady sharing how she has just fully embraced uh, learning, studying, memorizing God's Word, and her competition at the National Bible Bee this past November. And um, I think she said she finished eighth in the in the nation. And um, just an amazing accomplishment. And I just want to uplift her again and uh, compliment her. And I know many of you have mentioned things to me about her and how, how encouraging that was. So... Just a really cool thing. If you didn't get a chance to see it, go watch either on YouTube here or on our website. Go find this past Sunday sermon, January 9th, and watch, even if you just watch the first 10 minutes of the sermon, you'll see Jordan and hear that interview and be blessed by it. Hey, I just want to take a couple of minutes here uh, and, and talk a little further of, on a point uh, this past Sunday that may be confusing for some people. And a bit uh, foggy on some of this, and I'm gonna not I'm not gonna use the passage I preached out of Galatians five, but a couple chapters earlier, Galatians three. Um, Paul makes some statements here that I think I, I just want to expand on it. Maybe this will help some of you that are struggling with well, how does what what does it mean uh, to choose grace and not law and all that? Because a lot of Christians really struggle with. Um, the day-to-day -day living of their Christian life is all, it, it becomes all about uh, the rules, morality, ethics, what, what we should do and what we shouldn't do. Uh, it becomes about, uh, it, it, beca it begins to be all about our external actions, um, and it can boil down to some of those heart-level issues, but it, it always seems... To the, the external actions seem to dominate the evaluation and the 
examination of, hey, am I, am I walking with Christ? Well, what am I doing? It's, that's, well, I think Christ is, Christ is more concerned about your being, who you are in your heart and soul, because that always plays itself out in your doing. We tend to start with the doing, the outside. Um, and, and just change the external. We change the behavior, but we often don't change the heart. Well, Paul writes in Galatians 3, here's, here's I'll put these verses up here. Verses 23 through 25 in chapter 3 of Galatians. Now before faith came, and I mentioned Sunday how that, that's Jesus, right? That's the gospel. Faith there, Paul's talking about Christ. Before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So, you know, he, he talked there. He mentions, listen, when before Christ, we had the law. In other places, he'll say, hey, the law's good. The law's perfect. But the law was not designed to bring us to salvation. It was designed to point, to point out to us that we needed salvation. And so it, he says it, he uses strong language here. It imprisoned us, right? Um, he was, we're held captive under the law. And I mentioned Sunday, it's because you can never get out of the cycle. You can never finish or accomplish the law. You're always in the cycle of sin, sacrifice, sin, sacrifice. And the law just pointed that out, made that obvious. It gave the provision of a sacrifice for a temporary remedy, but that remedy was limited and uh, partial. Um, the book of Hebrews really expounds and expands on the reality of how Jesus is the greatest sacrifice, greater than any sacrifice in the Old Testament, which is why we have freedom in Christ, right? So Paul says we've been imprisoned until the coming faith, until Christ, the, the Messiah, would be revealed. He says verse 24, So then, the law was our guardian until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. Guardian there uh, means tutor or trainer. And in the uh, Greek-Roman culture, um, a, a high-ranking or highly trusted slave was often given the job of uh, teaching and training the children, all right, especially the young boys, to bring them up, to teach them how to act and behave and and how to fit in with culture and what their responsibilities were and how to live up to those, to those responsibilities, how to act like a man, and, you know, just different things. So, and, and Paul's saying that's what the, the law was. The law kind of helped train us, helped bring us up through elementary school and junior high and adolescence and high school, right? It trained us. It was our tutor, our guardian, until Christ came. The law was only designed to bring us to the cross, to the realization that we needed something more than ourselves. He says, so that in order that we might be justified by faith. He says, but now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. So I want to, I want to camp out just on that last phrase in verse 25. We're no longer under a guardian. Now, this does not mean that for the Christian there are no moral or ethical commands and rules for us to follow. But we don't follow the Old Testament law, we follow the law of Christ. And the law of Christ can be summed up in the greatest commandment, right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said those two commands sum up all the others. So the, command, the, the law of Christ is love. Love should guide our behavior. And the reason why that's better is because that's coming from internal things, not just an external adherence to a code. So the law of Christ is love. When we love God, we will obey His commands, and when we love God, we will love others because He loves them and He has created them in His image. A lot of Christians struggle with trusting love. <laughs> and that's where kind of the whole problem comes in, is when we say, yeah, Jesus plus. Faith in Jesus, but you have to adhere to this list of rules. No, no. 
That's not how the gospel works. It's faith in Jesus and faith alone. That's it, period. You're a, you're a believer in Jesus Christ when you have faith in, I mean, you're, you're saved from your sins when you have faith in Jesus Christ, when you're a believer in Jesus Christ. Should you then live differently? Yes, absolutely. But it's not by any list of codes that we have. It's out of love. That the law of Christ is love, not a list of 613 rules and regulations that we have in the Old Testament. So, I know it feels like there's a tension here. There really isn't a tension. If you truly understand the gospel and the freedom that we have in Christ, this is the freedom we have in Christ, to live out of love and not to live according to an external set of codes or rules or regulations that we have to keep checking ourselves against. We live out of love for God, which leads us to love for his commands and a love for others. And that's the law of Christ. And that's where we have our freedom in Christ. So, hope that is uh, helpful and not more confusing. <laughs> and uh, I pray that you have a, a really blessed week, but I also pray that you are a blessing to others this week. Let me pray real quick. Father, thank you for just your truth. It challenges us, and sometimes it's hard to understand and to follow the maybe the shift sometimes from the, the law to grace and things like this. Help us to even dig deeper and continue to try and lean into this and understand this more fully, more completely, so we can live it out completely and fully and, and truly understand and enjoy the freedom that we have in your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hey, thanks for tuning in, and uh, have an awesome week. Be a blessing, and we'll see you here on Sunday, either in person or on the live stream. Have a blessed week. Bye-bye.